What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 20 of the Firefighters Podcast. Uh, we had a lot going on here in New York in the last week or two. So uh, I wanted to bring in our, our good friend and photojournalist Lloyd Mitchell to uh, give us his view on what he witnessed last week. Uh, Lloyd, welcome back. Rob, thanks for having me. Uh, I see your your goatee growing a little bit since the last yes. time we spoke. Uh, yes. Looking good. Thank you. Thank you. Very I'm, nice. Uh, trying to grow it out a little bit for the for the summertime. Probably going to cut it back a little bit. Very uh, roof netto door. There we go. Going on there. Yes. There we go. Uh, nice. Um, so yeah, man. Last week in Sunset Park. Uh, another fucked up day here in the history of New York City. Uh, and you captured it amazingly again. Um, so. Bring us there, man. What uh, what did you see? Thank you. So uh, Tuesday morning, the job comes in j- just after, just before 8.30, uh, maybe like five minutes to eight. Uh, I'm sitting on the couch and I heard the job come in over FD for Brooklyn. Uh, they went to go investigate an odor of smoke in the subway system. And uh, next thing you know, the 4 row battalion gets, it gives back a radio report and he's staying at, the, uh, I need a rush on EMS and PD. I had multiple people shot in the subway system there. So now that changed the whole ballgame, right? Because with all the, uh, with everything going on in transit, the, subway crime is through the roof as is right you know yeah. the last was that over the sod uh the police radio also or it came over fire first uh i heard it over fire first okay uh depending it's on who rare you t- yeah the, depending on who you talk to you have different accounts but i heard it over fire before i heard it over pd right um and i just started out for it i called my my editor that I was working for for that day. And I, I said, look, I need another photographer. I need another reporter. And you might want to start me out the Manhattan reporter on top of that, because we got a big story. Turns yeah. out you got 10 people shot on the subway platform and in the subway car. And then you have more people trampled uh, as people were unfortunately panicking to get out of there, but understandably so. Right. Uh, figuring out a way to get out of there. So I'm on the move and I caught a bunch of units, uh, caught a bunch of NYPD units as they were getting in to that job. So I, I caught maybe six or seven units responding. And so that allowed me to save me some time and, and getting in. And as I'm getting getting to the scene, traffic is starting to slow down as, as you're hitting the main artery of where this thing was. And I got to the 36th street and just started making photographs of whatever I saw directly in front of me. You know, at that point, it's not about who you have to make pictures of. It's just make a picture, you know, get something on the board, you know, Mm -hmm. and uh, go from there. And I think I filed every, my photographs within two, three minutes of me getting there and just kind of worked my way through the scene, you know, tried to make different pictures, tried to make interesting pictures. And uh, I was happy with what I, with what I uh, came across uh, photographically wise that day. It was, it was a tough scene to shoot, but you just, if you make something effective, it doesn't matter as long as you make a picture that's effective to show people what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, and absolutely, I was there for uh, three, four different days uh, last week. So I saw more, more part of that area that I than I've seen in a long time. I saw. I don't know if you got down the tunnel right away, but I, I've seen pictures floating around of of the civilians helping out, which is something yeah. you don't you don't really see all that often. You don't see civilians stopping oh. to help other civilians, uh, especially at, at something like that. Yeah, uh, I mean. You, did you witness Listen, any of that? Uh, no, that part I actually missed because it was such a far, far ride from yeah. where I am to where it happened. Uh, but hats off to those civilians and stepping up like that. Uh, the guy was, he ended up shooting uh, 
he ended up shooting a lot of people in the legs. You know, nobody really had, like, I think four out of the 22 victims had gunshot wounds to that were like critical Mm -hmm. and they ended up just uh new yorkers you know doing what we do best helping people out in time of need you know um yeah i saw somebody tying a tourniquet um which which caused a stir in in fire twitter because people were saying you know he's tying it in the wrong spot he's not pressuring in the right like people armchair quarterbacking yeah and for for your listeners out there uh tourniquet is the last resort right uh if once you put it on you're basically saying goodbye to that limb uh but it's 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 only used when you're trying to stop somebody from bleeding out and dying so that's kind of a sacrifice you make so so to really armchair quarterback somebody who thought someone was bleeding out uh even if you're tying it wrong you're doing something it's better than nothing yeah listen the, the guy was was uh helping people out in that situation so i mean right at least at least the, a bunch of those guys stepped up and a bunch of those guys and women stepped up to, to do what they had to do. You know, it's, it's better than them recording the moment on their, their cell phone. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I'd much rather have those guys help out because instead of talking about uh, five people in critical condition, you're now, t- and, or five people dead, you're talking about five people in critical condition that have a chance to see tomorrow and the next day and right. the next day after that, you know, that's a win in my book. Now, I mean, obviously we can't get in the guy's head, but do you think he shot in the legs purposely or was he just a bad shot? Like, the... Ugh, I think he was, uh, I think he had intentions to do bad things. Yeah. You know, I also think he had uh, intentions on being a bad shot. You know, I don't think he meant to, because if you want to kill somebody, Right. You're obviously going to shoot up, not downward. And, and I mean, if you hit somebody in the leg, you hit them in their main artery. Right. That's ball game over sometimes, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. You can't, you can't, that whole thing was premeditated beyond belief. Uh, what we were hearing from a bunch of sources that we had is that his motive behind why he was doing what he did is because of uh, Eric, At- the mayor, and how he decided that he wanted and he was dealing with the homelessness situation. Oh. And it's okay. interesting because he, he had ramblings on social media that the mayor has now denounced and wanted uh, social media companies to do a better job at censoring that type of uh, rhetoric against people, you know? The mayor's only been in office four months, you know? Right. Um, and the, the fact that the guy wasn't even from here is even crazier. You know, I could understand if you have a personal beef and you're from here, but if you're from, you have residents in Philadelphia and you have residents in Wisconsin, that changes the whole ballgame. You know, you have no territory and nothing to gain Right here in, in New York City, no skin in the game, so to yeah, speak. none. Uh, if you don't know, the suspect's name is Frank R. James. Um, and there were ramblings out there, I guess he put him on Facebook or whatever, uh, denouncing Eric Adams. Uh, do you think it's like personal towards Eric Adams? Like, what, what, because it seems like the homeless issues, as you alluded to, well predate Eric Adams, you know, yes, the, yes, uh every mayor that we've had in, in my lifetime has had issues dealing with the homeless. I mean, that's the biggest city in the country. That's what you're going to have. Um, yeah. I mean, California it's, is riddled with homelessness right now as is Washington. So it's not just New York. So you think it was it, personal. It's unfortunate that it took a pandemic to have the homeless people looked at as actual people, you know, right. that have real life issues. Some of them, if they had, the correct counseling that they needed, they would have been taken care of and treated, you know, and they wouldn't have gotten to that point of homelessness. Like when you reach that point of homelessness, you're in like your ends wit, you know? And the people you talk to a lot of, like I have a reporter colleague friend of mine, he's talked to the the homeless shelter people uh, and the homeless people in general. And he says that 
they're afraid to go into the shelters because they know what the conditions are like there. Right. You know, you want to have what's best for you, but also your family. You know, they're doing these sweeps, but they're not giving the homeless people an opportunity to do what they have to do in the homeless people's eyes, which they just want to take their important documents with them because that's all they have left. Right. You know? The plan has to go further than just putting them under a roof, right? There has to be be a a next step, which is helping them provide one for themselves or get the mental health help they need, which is usually the case from from personal experience is that homeless homeless people are dealing with some sort of mental health crisis. Yes. Um, it, I don't think, maybe once or twice in my career did I encounter a, a homeless person where they really just like chilling out on the street. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? I don't, I don't, if you were to ask them truthfully deep down inside and they were like thinking like a regular everyday person, all of them would tell you no. I don't want to be out here, but the circumstances for them are what they are. And it's an unfortunate circumstance here in the city and in other parts of the country, you know, we just, it's, it's messed up, man. Um, But yeah, he's been charged with uh, federal uh, terrorism charges. So that's a whole nother set of uh, ball game. So I actually didn't get a chance to see him when he was at the ninth precinct when they arrested him. Uh, I got sent somewhere else involving that story. So, uh, so you know, I, yeah. the ninth precinct is in Manhattan. So he made it out of the borough, and he spent a couple of days. So he must have went. He straight, straight over the over the thirty bridge. hours. Yeah, uh, they were they were on a manhunt for him for thirty hours looking for him, and he. Depending on who you ask and who you talk to and what news channel you you listen to or or read, he was sitting at McDonald's and he he called in the tip hotline and he said, "Hey, I think you guys are looking for me." Uh, this a a man that runs a smoke shop happened to see him. He called nine one one. He called the tip hotline. He found him. Uh, they, so they're splitting the fifty thousand dollars amongst five different people that have oh, really okay. yeah which is pretty cool um yeah it just you see something say something you know right. it goes back to one of those type of situations you know this um, is the first i've heard of people actually getting that paid i've seen the bumper stickers my whole life i didn't i never <laughs> heard of anyone yeah. actually getting the money so that's cool. yeah 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 it's like five people uh that are involved right. in the uh that are going to be paid out for it so good on them you know oh, good. um and that's pretty much it, man. Uh, but making making photographs was tough. Uh, but so, you know, yeah. Bring us back to the scene because you know you said he's being charged with terrorism, which I think uh, you know shows us more of like an act like that. It's over in whatever it was, ten seconds. But yes. the terror that it causes lasted that entire day, and it creates a whole other scene. You know, in, in yes. the first responder community, where we're on high alert now because you're worried about secondary devices. Um, yes. You know, people who plan things like this, like this guy seems like he planned it. Sometimes they do trials to see how we respond, where we park the rigs, uh, you know, where the police enter. So if he wants to take out first responders, that's how they find out. So you're on high alert, you know, just being in the street because you don't know if he yeah. planted a bomb in a in a garbage can or in a car or something. Yeah. Um, you, and there you, were schools around. So what, what was that scene like? The, the schools were on lockdown. I actually made a picture of uh, high schoolers looking out the window, waving in the window, uh, where they, they almost were like, help, help, help us, you know? But the schools were, on, both schools on that block, on 4th Avenue were on lockdown. Uh, school safety did what they had to do. NYPD did what they had to do. Uh, ESU was conducting their searches. Uh, fire department was doing what what they had to do, fire department EMS was doing, what they had to do. It was just a lot of different moving parts right. and whatever was just in front of me. I didn't have like a specific game plan of what I was going to take a picture of. I just needed to make a solid picture to convey that moment, you know? Right. Right. And I didn't care what it came, came down to, whether it be an FBI agent, a firefighter, a paramedic. As long as I was making pictures on the scoreboard for me that day, that was a win for me, you know? 
how how long into it did you notice the federal agencies there was it oh the early? moment i because they're close mm -hmm. by right yeah the moment i got there i that oh, was yeah. the first yeah that was the, the first picture that i i filed off was the fbi agent okay. uh, at the scene there was several there was like three fbi agents walking uh, uh up towards the scene and that was the first picture i made while i was there oh, when nice. i got there you know and that was a little bit after nine o'clock like maybe nine or three i want to say that was my first picture that i made you know you're just kind of doing what you got to do and and worrying about all the other scenarios that could possibly play out you know like where is this where is this guy at you know what's right. he does he have other devices on him? Does he have anything else planned here? Because it, it it all started at the 25th Street train station. And it's the train conductor made a brilliant heads up move and moved the train out of, out of the train station and got it to 36th Street. And then that's when they realized what the hell they had going on there. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot of different moving parts to that that whole thing you know um but you you think about, about the magnitude of the situation rush hour 8 30 in the morning we got considerably lucky that we don't have multiple people dead out yeah. of the situation you know and it uh a colleague was telling me that it was the most people we ever have had shot on the new york city train station uh or in a new york city train station at one time which is that's pretty substantial, you know, yeah. Yeah, considering yeah. that he shot 10 people and then another 22 were 23 were uh, trampled and run over and just people panicking. I don't blame the people for panicking, you know, right. And um, what 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 was the device he set off that created the smoke? Was it just like a smoke bomb or something? Or? Uh, it sounded like it was a smoke bomb from yeah. what we were told. Yeah. Um, like he had canisters with him. OK. Um, and all that good jazz. So. He was, well, at least uh, it wasn't an explosive because that thank goodness. Created a, yeah, um, that would have created more chaos than what people already needed on top of what they already had, you know. Um, and you know, that's that's pretty much uh the ball game at that point. It was just like get there, let my editors know what I had while I was in route, what I was hearing, do what I had to do, and make do with the best of my ability you know yeah. um, how do you gear up for that do you, i mean you do a lot of fire but do you do you have a flak jacket like how do you how do you roll no out? i was just kind of just moving like how i normally move, yeah you know um listening into the radio just to make sure that i knew exactly to pick a point that was going to be of most use to me so there was technically two separate scenes. It was the 25th Street right. station and the, and the 36th Street station. And I, the route that I took in left me off at 4th Avenue and 36th. So that was the much easier right. route for me to do what I had to do. But uh, I went in, I was just very, I was, I took my time going in and uh, just kind of surveyed everything. You know, and once I saw my colleagues, I just kind of stuck with my colleagues and we kind of just went from there. And then that's when the police department and fire department started throwing up crime scene tape and they actually yeah. moved us back off the block. So in, in real time, I had five to eight minutes to make photographs right. off of uh, it. So. He, he didn't take any shots out, outside the station, right? That, no, no. Uh, Everything was uh, in, the, in the tunnel between 25th Street and 36th Street. So it was while the train was moving. Yes. So, all right, because I saw a cell phone video and it was I, I was wondering why the person was even taking a video because you re there yeah. really wasn't much going on, but they must have heard something in a different car and then it made their way yes. to them. Is that what happened? Yeah, that's what it seems like it happened to me. There's there's certain little things that we were all trying to figure out and that was one of them. So it didn't look like there was much going on in that car. But then there's other videos that surfaced where people were like covering their mouths because you could see the smoke traveling right. into their car you know um I, and the, i guess the masks came in handy that everyone has a mask in their pocket yeah yeah right? yeah, you know? yeah um and the, the fact that he put on a uh gas mask and started shooting 
I'm pretty sure that like hindered his ability to shoot, you know? Right. Um, Cause he couldn't see, you know? Yeah. So he, he, his mission of what he wanted to do was hindered, you right. know? Um, and that was it. But it, it, in all actuality, that whole thing, we got really lucky once again, that it wasn't significantly worse off than thank God for what it just was, you know? Right. Uh, um, that that's a fairly busy train line right that's mm -hmm. uh so you, you're it's, talking tens of thousands of people a day yeah it's got all of more. western the that western side of brooklyn it's right. it's a main artery for a lot of people in that area um but uh yeah we got really lucky um hopefully that doesn't happen again for quite some time well i mean and I, I wanted to move on to this anyway. You, you, you brought up the rise in subway crime. Um, yeah. Obviously, this is related to it. But what, what other types of stuff are you seeing out there? Because I know. Uh, I had a shooting. Uh, I had two shootings, actually, last month on the A-train line uh, where people were involved in disputes on the A train line. And people are pulling out handguns and shooting these guys. You know, one guy was in critical condition. Right. Off, off of the shooting. Uh, the homelessness is is out of control down there. Transit is uh, the officers there are trying, but there's only so much they can do. You know, it seems right. like there, there's more homeless people on the train than there are cops in the station. You know, well, That's that was a big bone of contention with all the, the marches and the riots last year was the police presence in the subway. And now it seems uh, it's ba it's backfired. Right. You know, you, you need you need officers in the station, you know, put yeah. two on the two, put two on the platform. Put another two on the other side of the platform. You got four there and then put two above and at least give them presence, you know, like let them yeah. know. Let the people know that, hey, we're out here, you know, we're trying to help you, you know, um, I want to be as safe as possible. Like if I'm on the train, I want to, I want people to know that, Hey, if, if a bad guy is on the train, I want them to have second, third thoughts about doing something outrageous, you sure. know? Um, but there's also way, ways people need to protect themselves better and, and be more aware. Uh, yes. Get you know, off your, get off your cell phone. Take, 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 at least take one of your earphones out so you can hear what's going on and yes. keep your head out, keep your head up. Yes. Um, I always stand back against the wall when I'm on the platform because mm -hmm. you don't want to be near the yellow line, right? Because these yep. now they're pushing people onto the, I mean, that's always been a thing, but it seems to be an uptick. So there are ways out there, you know, besides needing more police, but people need to, to take better it's, care of themselves also. Make, make yourself hard to kill, you know, make yourself bigger than you need to be while you're down there on the train or just use common sense and be a part of your surroundings, you know, like a text message and a phone conversation with a significant other or somebody that's in your family can wait while you're down there. Cause it's dangerous down there. Right. You know, but that's There's something no... that city kids know. Like we know that cause we grew up here, but people who move here, yes. from other, you know, you just, I guess there's an assumed safety, but we, we were, it was ingrained in us that especially on the subway, like, you know, be aware of what you're doing. Don't put your bags down. Yeah. You know, keep your head up. Yeah. You know, like you said, make yourself seem bigger than you are. Than you are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's, it's incredible to me like, that you, you watch and for every 10 people on the train, about eight of them are have their head in, in, in the train car, have their head in their phone. And you're like, guys, this is a recipe for disaster. Because if you have a situation like that, yeah. you won't know what to do. Where you'll to be go. shot before you even realize what's happening. Yes. You'll be a sitting duck, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. It's uh, crazy, man. Uh, hopefully we don't have one of those anytime soon because that messed up my whole week, man. <laughs> uh, it, it messed up my, my entire week. But uh, my, the crew at AM New York and Brooklyn Paper did a, uh, a hell of a job in constructing the articles, putting the articles together, the use of photography, use of writing, and just following up on that story, you know, yeah. it once again goes to show you when you work as, as a team, good things happen, you know, and, and getting that information out there 
uh, good things happening. You just got to do what you got to do to let people know what's really going on. You know, right. And this, as we were just is, saying, to to prepare the the passengers for what's go what what can happen. So yeah, you just never know. You yeah. never ever know. Um, yeah, it's crazy town USA out there, man. It's uh, it's not just you know middle of America that's seeing crazy crimes. It's here too. Uh, you know, I, I know. I I took my son to the Ranger game uh, on Saturday and. It was the the first time I had second thoughts about taking the train, and uh, mm-hmm. we ended up getting a ride. It could just because, you know, I mean, I'm in my position. I can't really defend myself, let alone my eight year old son. So it's yeah. it's tough out yeah. there, you know. You gotta... yeah. you, you do what you got to do, man, um, and just go from there. But uh, yeah, um, you know, I was just trying to get something on the scoreboard for those guys because all I knew is I had to get there, make make photographs do what I had to do. Um, I didn't care what the city agency was, what the federal agency was. I was just like needing to make a picture of relevance and of interest of that day. You right, know? But, but you showed, and, and a lot of people don't know this, is that all these agencies, FDNY, NYPD, FBI, we train together. You know, mm-hmm. we, we train for these specific events together, you know, a few times a year. They're mass drills and, you know, People complain when, when cops and firefighters have overtime that gets too high, but this is the type of stuff that, that we're paying for. Yes. So that when, when the shit goes down, we have people who know what to do, you know? Yes. Like, yes. ironically, on September 12, 2001, uh, my academy class was supposed to go to the Trade Center to play victims for the FBI uh, oh, wow. terrorism drill, um, which is insane, you know, thinking yeah. back that the very next day we were all supposed to be there uh, to wild. train for the exact thing that happened. Yeah. But, you, you know, this is this is, you know, when they get their intel and their information, they they don't tell us exactly what's going on, but we can figure it out by the types of drills that they're putting us through. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So. But, um, so it was cool that you got, you know, you captured a lot of that. And, and people yeah, I uh, I often try and say I, tr- I don't ever want to be in those positions, but right. my nature of my side of my job calls me to be in those types of types of positions, you know, um, yeah. Like w- one of my agencies that I work for, we have a uh, hazardous and bioterrorism uh, training conference that we go to every, I think it's four months that we do it. Oh, yeah. And that stuff's cool, man. Like you, you get a chance to do a lot of interesting things that like the average general person doesn't know how to do or how to react to it. Mm-hmm. you know um and yeah that's cool it it pays off in those situations you know right well then when you get to the scene you know exactly what you're looking for you know yeah. you know where to aim uh yeah. your camera because yeah. you, know, and, you know what they're going to do yeah and that's it so um yeah i think i filed off had to be maybe 25 30 photographs and then i st- stuck around for the press conference so in total I made about 60, I made 180 photographs and I filed off anywhere from 40 to 60 pictures that day in a matter of minutes to a couple of hours, you yeah. know? And cause those guys are, they're, they're writing it while it's in progress. Yeah. You know, we have a reporter gathering the, the facts and then we have a reporter writing it and then they're waiting for the, the pictures on top of that. So, yeah. So if, if you haven't followed Lloyd yet, uh, I don't know what you're waiting for, but follow Lloyd. Uh, we're going to share a lot of these pictures uh, if you yeah. haven't seen them uh, from our pages. But, uh, you know, check them out. Um, the last time we had Lloyd on, oh, I didn't get to congratulate you. The uh, pictures we spoke about uh, won awards, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, just tell us quick before we go. Tell everybody what, uh, what went down. So I won... Uh third place for breaking news spot news category for a uh, water rescue in 2021 i won uh exhibit award for a photo from hurricane ida uh relief coverage that we did down in jamaica on australia on that and then the third photograph was a 
fire in Canarsie. Uh, and, you know, it just, uh, it was a judging that took place over two days. And out of 59 entries, I had, uh, I placed third, fifth, and sixth out of uh, 60 entries. So oh, that awesome. makes you feel better you know, yeah. for, for the end of year work that you do. So now I got a whole different set of work that I'm looking at this year already. And I'm like, what do I put in? We're doing, yeah, you I got think, a lot already. Oh, God, we're doing more work this year than I think we have done the last two years and it's been out of control you know oh quick that reminds me before i let mm -hmm. you go i uh that fire you went to where they saved a toddler yeah um can you give us a quick rundown of that uh yeah sure that, uh yeah, so great that, pictures of that one too that was a uh, fire at 10 o'clock in the morning on march first uh fire on the top floor of a brownstone the 3-8 gave the uh, urgent 1075 for a fire on the second floor and third floor. 1075 then, means there's a victim down uh, in, in a fire or some sort of emergency. Go yes. Um, and uh, engine company 234 and 123 were first due. They pulled out a mother and they pulled out a toddler. What I didn't realize at the time on the sidewalk when I was making photographs, an EMT was working on the toddler. Uh, and this cop comes over to me and he gets in my face and he asks me to move back. But there was no crime scene tape set up. So we briefly like exchanged words, like gentlemanly words. Like, it was nothing bad, right. nothing out of the ordinary next thing i know they bring the mother around the corner they dump her off the stairs bring her around the corner start doing cpr on her on a stretcher with the emts and firefighters and they run her down the block to the ambulance uh and then they are running with the toddler through the streets of atlantic avenue um and the which is a very busy street. Uh, if Extremely. You don't, if you don't know Brooklyn, that's it's a main artery. Right. Just Broadway. Right. Um, and they uh, they ran them to the ambulances, both of them to the ambulance, and unfortunately, both of them ended up dying like a couple of hours later. Oh. You know, um, it's uh, the the effort that those guys put forth to get to them was incredible, but and they had. Uh, if I remember correctly, the smoke detectors were not in operation, I want to say. Um, and it's unfortunate, you know, but. It happens things, when they start chirping. Happens. Sometimes people just pull the battery out rather than yep. replace it because uh, yep. it's annoying. Yep. And uh, beautiful brownstone. The, the grandmother was on the floor. She was inconsolable. I actually put my cameras down at that point because I was like, this family's been through enough right. as yeah. is, you know, you gotta be, uh, have some sort of compassion sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, and this was definitely the time to do it. And that's it. Uh, I wish, I think everybody there wishes the outcome was a little different. And that's the end of, uh, that's the end of that one, yeah. you know, but uh, we'll see what the rest of the year brings, but yeah. who knows? You know, it's going to be a very interesting ride. It's already been an interesting ride, and that's it. All right. All right, man. Well, we'll obviously, we'll have you back on, and hopefully uh, not too soon, because we don't, yes, we don't hopefully need not any more tragedies. But yes. uh, keep up the great work. Um, you know, keep doing what you do. we got to put a, a shelf up behind you there to put your awards on. we got to get, yes. some, uh, get some guys over yeah. there to, to help when I, you. When I, get the man, when I get the... the uh, awards themselves i'll uh work on that all right all right, all all right. right. talk to you in a bit my Sounds friend good be safe Bye. out there you too